I'd like to greet the church, those who visit us, and those who are watching with the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite those who can to stand up. We're going to open the word of the Lord in the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 12. We're going to read only We're going to read a couple of verses from verse 22. We're going to read verse 22, 23, then we're going to skip to the 29. The word of the Lord tells, tells us the following. It says the following. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Now verse 29. And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind, for all these things of the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, now these things shall be added to you. Blessed be the Lord. My Father, we praise your name. We glorify you, Lord, because you, you brought us to this place for your sustenance, for your love, for the presence of your angels in our midst, for everything that you have done for us, and that you are doing, that you ought to do. We pray asking a blessing for your word also. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, the, the word that we just read speaks, begins uh, telling that Jesus was having a conversation with his disciples. And he would explain to them the matter of the concern of human beings, generally speaking. And the word of the Lord tonight speaks in the same way that Jesus spoke to his disciples there, the word of the Lord is for us, the church of the Lord. The Lord was not speaking with the multitude. He was speaking to his disciples. And tonight, the Lord is speaking to us, church of the Lord. The world has already made their choice. The world has already made a decision. But the Lord now is speaking to a body that wants to live in heaven, the people that want to be with the Lord. And he speaks about the anxiety and the, the human beings. Us, being servants or not, we all have. And this life, especially in our days, it brings that to us, this anxiety. In times we make plans that are so far away, we think so far ahead about what we are going to do. College to our children, they are still um, in first grade. I was even thinking that some may have already seen on the news, on the, the news about an athlete, a famous athlete here that passed away and it even mentioned to my wife that it brought a great discomfort to me because not because of anything personal regarding him but but I was thinking about the message that we already heard on Sunday morning Sunday evening a young man with a lot of money plans for him and for his family 
in a blink of an eye, the life, his life was over. How many times we, we make plans without knowing what God has for us? And the Lord make, begins to make those comparisons. And it is normal. There is no sin in us having our own concerns. No. But what the Lord has for us tonight is that we should know how to rest on the Lord. And it is interesting because in the parable, the previous parable, on the previous verses that we just read, it speaks of, of uh, rich, uh, unwise man. It says that he had received, received an inheritance. And he profited from the, that inheritance. But the point is that he received his inheritance. And a man received his inheritance when his father died. If the fa father died, then the inheritance goes to the, the son. And many live in this situation. Many live spending their lives. Oh, what they have uh, that is the most important, when I speak about the physical, material side, but when I talk about your spiritual life, you spend your life worried about what you're going to do, how you're going to survive, we're in a country here where they give us so much easy and so much and so easy access to so many things. We see on the youth things that in my time I even I never thought about having like a cell phone, for example. Today, you see adolescents and children with cell phones, and there's nothing wrong with that. So, but what we want to say, especially in this country, gives, gives to us so much and so easy access to things that many times you forget that what has given us the means to have these things is the Lord. The Lord is the one who has provided for our lives. If today we are here, today we have the means, it is because the Lord has given us. And my brethren, this man, the one who we have spoken of, he was an orphan. He didn't have a father. But we who came here tonight, we have a father. He's a father that takes care of our lives. He's a father that sustains us. The text says, there are people from the world, they think of those things. They are worried about those things. But your father, he knows what you need. My brethren, tonight the word of the Lord for you is that you have a father. He's not a, you are not alone. You are not an orphan. We are not orphans. And we plan our lives based on what the Lord has for us. Because this world, the, no matter how much promises and they, uh, they give us and how many things they offer us, it, it will all pass. The riches will pass, but what remains is, is the blessing of the Lord. That will remain in our hearts. Amen, my brethren, the Father, it is interesting because the father uh, is goes to help the son in the moment in which the son needs the most. I was mentioning this a couple of weeks ago. My daughter woke up in the middle of the night a couple of weeks ago and she went to my side of the bed and said, Daddy, I dreamt about something bad. I can't sleep. So then I got up, took her in my bed, in my arms, put her on the bed put a song there and prayed with her and I said, everything will be all right. I stayed with her a few minutes and she slept and I went to bed. The following day, she woke up if, like if nothing had happened. And our father does that. Many times, how many times, my brother? How many times are we not afraid? How many times here? Doesn't matter if you are youth, you are the last son, woman or a man, how many times you don't feel afraid and we say, Lord, you are my father. This situation I'm afraid of. I don't know what to do. And then you know what the Lord does? He, he picks, up, picks us up on his arms and he says, my son or my daughter, and he says, everything will be all right. 
the night passes, we sleep, and on the other day we wake up like if nothing had happened. This is our Father, my brethren, the faithful church, the church of the Lord is not orphan. The church of the Lord has a Father, and He is our Father that provides to us all things. And the text says, seek first the, thing, the kingdom of God. Before what? The youth is going to date. Seek the Lord first. You need a job. Seek the Lord first. Because the blessing the Lord has for us cannot be measured and compared to anything that the world can offer, can offer to us. My brethren, the, our greatest inheritance is on the text in Matthew that says the following, Come, blessed of my Father, take on the inheritance that have, has already been prepared for you. My brethren, our inheritance is not a silos. They are not the things of this world. They are not the things that we are going to wear or what we are going to use. Our inheritance is a kingdom that has already been prepared from the foundation of the world. What awaits us is an eternity. What would be use of me to plan? That's what was said last Sunday. What would be the point of me planning about my life for 15, 10 years in the future? And something unexpected that happens, like the example I gave about the athlete, happens and then you lose your life. Isn't it better to plan a life towards an eternity? Is, isn't it much better to have an assurance that I'm going to have an eternity with the Lord and we know what awaits us what awaits us is a continual praise in our lips what awaits us is an eternal joy what awaits us is to praise the Lord eternally our heavenly mansions that await us that's what awaits the servant of the Lord we don't know how it's going to be but we know what, what's going to be there because we already tasted it in the presence of the Lord. My brethren, the word of God is that we have a Father. You, like the gift that was, a spiritual gift that was shared, we don't know every, we all may have plans for our lives, and we all have plans, of course, but the most important is to know what God has planned for us. Because our Father, He knows what we need. He knows what is going to happen there in the future. Lord, my brethren, that's the word of the Lord for us tonight. We're going to glorify the Lord with a song. Oh, the Lord comes, the bright light.
Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Interesting that this song speaks of her. Uh, it says that soon the life will come to an end and the things are going to pass. But the assurance that the servant has is to know that nothing was in vain. The life will pass, the pains are going to pass, the joy of this world are going to, is going to pass. But what matters to me and what matters to ser the servants of the Lord, to the brethren, is that things are going to pass. About 30, 50 years, I don't know, but we're going to be together with our God with the one who gave his life for us, and tonight we live for him, like the song says. I'd like to invite the brand to stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, it's even difficult to sing this song, the last part, Lord, because it would be all worth, Lord. All the sadness, everything will pass, Lord. Our heart is filled with joy for being in our house because here, Lord, we can taste of a little bit of what we are going to experience on the eternity, Lord. Thank you because you do everything for us, Lord. Because you have been our comfort, Lord. You have been the reason why we have not been consumed, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because we are privileged people, Lord. Exalt you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bendito o nome do Senhor. We're going to have a moment of glorification to the Lord. Church, praise in the name of the Lord. The life may be difficult, my brethren, but it's worth to serve the Lord. Lord, we praise your name, Lord. We praise the Lord because you are worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the power, and all the praise. You are the one who rescued us. You are the one who strengthened us on the rock. You are the one who placed on the path that will lead to eternity. And we glorify the Lord for this opportunity. Because for us, it's a privilege to serve the Lord. And, and so many you have chosen us. And we glorify the Lord. Because we have our trials, we have our tribulations, but nothing is hidden. We know each detail of our lives. And we thank you, Lord, for this. Because we know that it doesn't matter the trial, it doesn't matter the difficulty. You are ahead of our battle. You have a father, you have a friend, a counselor that sustains us. Lord, we praise you for this. And want to say, Lord, take us home in peace and security, so, and that we may have a, the remaining of the week uh, with victories, and in the midst of the trial, will remain with us, and we see the victory in our life every day, sustain our homes, our lives, our faith. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen, Lord. The church may be seated. If anyone desire uh, an assistance, a prayer, we are here to give assistance to the brethren and pray to the brethren, anything else, and to all the peace of the Lord.